guys and welcome back to Suri Slango Golf Club. Today we're starting on the back nine and I'm just going to take you guys through a little course vlog here at Suri Slango since it's been a while since I last showed you guys this course. So we're starting off with hole 10. I'm teeing off with a three wood here. It is a pretty narrow fairway as you can tell if I were to hit a driver I get into a pretty narrow part of the fairway. Over here as you can see it's somewhere up there and obviously with the landing zone being that small I would much rather just hit it shorter. But obviously that also means that I'm going to have a longer approach shot into this green. I think that for this hole, you really just want to prioritize your tee shot. Just make sure that you get something that's going to go on a fairway because that's really going to make your life a lot easier. As you can see from this angle actually, it is a pretty narrow fairway so I would recommend hitting whatever you feel the most comfortable with. It might not be the longest club but you just have to get it on the fairway that's really going to make your life a lot easier. So after that little chip, I gave myself this little short part for par. So let's move on to the second hole. The second hole is par 4. It is relatively short so I'm actually hitting a 3 wood here again. Just because again with the driver, I get into kind of the downhill part of the landing zone which if I get a bad kick, I can get into a bad area. Unfortunately, I hit this 3 wood a little bit too far left. Obviously, you can't see it here but over here, you can see it. Because there is a tree in front of me, I can't hit it too high and because it is a short approach shot, if I were to hit a wedge, it would definitely go straight into that tree. So I decided to go with a 6 iron and just am hitting a very soft shot because past the cart path is actually all downhill. This green is also usually pretty hard so I definitely cannot land it too close to the green. Unfortunately, I did not get the bounce that I wanted to and it just kind of got short of the green. Over here though, I did not leave myself in a bad position. It was, as I said, short of the green. And as you can tell, it's uphill and then downhill, so where the pin is, it's actually downhill. Because of how hard this green normally is, my plan here was just to let the ball roll out and roll to the pin. As I said before, the pin is a downhill slope as well. Unfortunately for me, it just did not roll out as much as I thought it was going to. Probably because it was still wet and it was in the morning. So unfortunately, this hole should actually be at least a birdie opportunity hole for it. I was struggling just to get a par. The good news was I actually did exactly what I wanted to do for almost every shot, obviously except the first shot, but it just did not turn out. But that's just golf, sometimes that happens, so I guess we'll just move on to the next hole which is a par 3. So beautiful par 3 here, water all in front of the green, red flag today, so there is a bit of a smaller landing area for the red flag. Everything on this green also kicks left, so I was planning to hit this right of the pin. Maybe it was the lack of focus because I was laughing right before my tee shot, which is not something I advise for you to do. Or I was just aiming wrong and didn't really fully commit to the shot, but I unfortunately did not hit a good shot and left myself in this bunker, which is not a good place to be in because everything goes downhill. As I said just now, everything kicks left, so obviously from here, everything just kicks very hard downhill because it's all moving towards the water. This was going to be a tough shot regardless and I could not really aim left of the pin because obviously that was just leading towards the water. So I hit about as good of a shot as I can because the greens aren't really spinning. I don't know if you could tell from the video but because there is a lot of sand on the green, obviously it's going to be very hard to spin the ball and moreover definitely even harder from a bunker that did not have much sand. So I knew that I was going to have a long putt, which is what I had and unfortunately did not make it. Not the best start here. Bogeying two holes that should definitely at least be a par. But it's only been two holes, so let's just keep going and see what we can do and try to salvage the round. Don't forget that your beginning is no indication of your end. Hole 4 is a par 5, again a pretty narrow one. So everything on this ferry kicks left as well and basically if you hit anywhere left of this ferry, you're definitely going to the hazard down on the left side. On the right side as well, you do not want to hit it too far right because as you can see, there are trees. So it is important here to make sure that you choose a good target. My target was actually that tree sticking out in the center of the fairway because that would allow me to hit a little bit of a draw and make sure that even if I do draw it, it's not going to go into the water. Yeah. 
So I hit a good tee shot there and left myself on the fairway. When you're on the fairway over here, there is a chance that you can go for the green. I took a little bit more club here because obviously there is water short and there's nothing much behind the pin. The pin is also in the center of the green which means there is quite a bit of space past the pin. Over here from the right side, it's actually pretty difficult to chip it because everything goes downhill and kind of goes away from the hole. So if you're able to, make sure you choose a good target. For me, because I play a draw, I was actually just aiming at the pin and allowing the draw to take it because even if it were to go left, I would have an uphill chip versus from the right side of the green which I would have a downhill chip. Most importantly, when you're aiming for the screen, make sure that whatever club you're choosing, you're going to have enough carry distance to make sure that you clear the water easily. Unfortunately for me, I definitely gave the uphill too much respect and hit that way too hard. But I do find the chipping here to be quite tricky at Sri Slango because you do need to hit a little bit more of a different kind of chipping style compared to what I'm used to at TPC. What I play at TPC probably won't work out here because the greens just don't really spin much. As I said, they are pretty sandy today as well. So if you were to hit a high one, it could just spin to a stop or it could just roll out really far. So adjusting and adapting to that is very important as well. So we finally got one back and now we're moving on to the next hole which is another part 3. This part 3 as you can see is pretty long. Because today it is sandy as well, I am able to take more club and just be a little bit more aggressive. Usually the greens at Sri Slango are pretty hard so you don't really want to go for the pin and you usually just want to aim more towards the front or the center of the green obviously depending on where the pin is. But today I felt like I could be more aggressive just with the conditions of the green. So I missed birdie there, the ball did not break as much as I thought it was going to and I might have just hit it a little bit too hard for it to take the break but we won't complain about a par on a long par 3. The next hole is a par 4, it is downhill, a little bit of a dog leg left. So for this hole, you actually want to try to keep it a little bit towards the right side of this fairway. This fairway again is another fairway that kicks left. However, obviously you do want to make sure that you do not run out of the fairway on the right side because then you would be left behind those trees. Most of the time though, you're pretty fine just aiming it out towards the right side and just letting the ball kick towards the left. Unfortunately for me, this shot was not a good shot and I hit it too far left and it went down the slope. So, as you can see from the left side here, it is not a very good place to be because you cannot really see the pin or the green. From this lie here, I think you can tell that my ball is pretty high above my feet. Also because I'm kind of in the rough but not really in a bad spot, I felt like he was going to draw quite a lot. So as you can see, I was aiming quite a bit right but I didn't really draw it enough and also did not compensate for the fact that I'm hitting something as an 8 iron, not like a 6 iron which should obviously draw a lot more. Bad decision there left me in this bunker which is not really the easiest place to be either because it's a long bunker shot, there's not much green to work with before the pin. I hit a pretty decent bunker shot but even after that, I was still left pretty long ways from the pin. So an unfortunate bogey there but obviously did not leave myself in a good spot right off the bat from the tee shot. Anyways, let's move on to the next hole. For this par 4, it is a dog leg left but you definitely want to aim more towards the left side if you're hitting something like a driver. Because if you hit towards the right side and you run out of fairway over here, it's going to be OB. So if you're not confident to hit down the left side, you should hit something shorter and just make sure that you're not going to run out of fairway. The perfect aim for me here is actually the light pole, so that is where I'm aiming my drive. So I thought that was absolutely hilarious and also because like I said, I really was aiming for the pole and what are the chances that I actually hit it right into the pole? 
So because this is for YouTube, I hope you guys don't mind me just taking a mulligan from that shot. If you guys were wondering what the actual ruling is, you actually have to play as it lies. My ball actually went 90 degrees and went straight into the woods. If it was playable, I definitely would have been playing it, but yeah. So anyway, just for the sake of this video, let's just play off this second ball and consider it a mulligan because you know, you guys are very nice and you guys love to see me play golf. So yeah, we'll just take it as this is my second shot. So for this green, you do want to watch out a little bit because this green is again pretty hard and everything bounces over. So for this one, it actually will bounce over if you hit it too far and from the back of the green, it's not a bad spot as long as you're still on the green but if you go any further than that, it can roll down a pretty big slope so you do want to be careful if anything, it's better to hit a little bit short and have a putt. So after my mulligan par, <laughs> let's move on to the next hole which is a par 4. This par 4 is a dog leg right, it's a pretty severe dog leg right and everything on this fairway again kicks left. As you can see there's also a bunker down there so you do want to make sure that you keep it more towards the right side of this fairway but obviously not too far right that you would go into the OB. If it is possible for you to hit a fade, this is definitely more of a fade hole. If not, I would just recommend hitting something shorter because this is not a very long hole anyway. So hitting it on the fairway here is much more important than hitting a specific distance or hitting it as far as possible. For me here, I thought it was a good practice for me to try and hit a fade and I actually hit a really good shot so I was very happy with that. Even though I faded it around the trees, I still ended up on the left side of this fairway so it is a pretty severe slope from the right to the left of this fairway. So as you can see, I do not have very far for my second shot. This green is usually pretty hard as well so as usual like I said the greens here are pretty hard but today since they are more receptive I was able to be a little bit more aggressive however here I'm still planning to just hit it to the center of the green and just let it roll again this green also kicks to the left so this entire hole kicks from right to left I actually hit a really good second shot and left myself with a little tap in birdie on this hole We've reached the last hole on this nine. The last hole here is actually a par 5, it is a relatively short par 5. Over here as you can see there's a bunker down the left side which is reachable but not an easy carry so it's definitely advisable to avoid that side and there are two bunkers down the right side and for those bunkers I can actually carry them so that's why for this hole my aim is actually more towards the right side of this fairway even though this fairway kicks from left to right. Personally, I've also found that from my experience of playing on this golf course, when you're on the right side, even though you might be in the rough, you still have a pretty decent angle into the green if you were to go for it in two. And if not, the right side actually is a much more ideal location for you to lay up as well because you have a better angle from the right side. So after my tee shot, I only had 170 yards to the green so I was definitely going for it. I was sitting a little bit in the rough but it was a pretty decent lie. So for this hole, there is water in front but from this angle and from the distance that I'm hitting, the water in front is not really in play. Instead, the water at the left side of the green is definitely in play. If you're not very confident, especially because if you're stuck here on the rough which is obviously going to pull your ball a little bit more, you can most definitely aim more towards the right side but there is a bunker on the right side as well. So even though it is a short hole, it's not a very easy green to approach. As you can see here, the bunker on the right side is pretty big and if you were to be hitting from there, it is down slope so it's not the easiest bunker shot. After hitting on the green, I gave myself this chance for eagle with this putt. Unfortunately, it did not break as much as I thought it was going to but it was still a decent putt and still gave myself a tap in birdie. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next video which will be the front nine of this course or my back nine. See you then!